Yo, the bra is just invisible and stuff. We back to the basics right now, baby. We back to the basics, I can't even do it. <laughs> You look like you you didn't even exist. We didn't even know your name. Who are you? Yo, we just we just took her out. Choke hold. She's gone. <laughs> What up, what going on at the same? It's your girl, Minna, not Mina. Let's do this again, it's Minna. And in this video, we are going to do a drugstore full makeup tutorial, talk through, that kind of a thing. So if you love drugstore makeup, if this is your area of affordability, which I understand because why not be able to get a bomb makeup look for the low low? Then this is the video for you. Make sure you are subscribed here on YouTube. Make sure you are following me on IG as well. Join my text community because it's free and you can be a part of all of that. Giveaways are random. All you have to do is just engage genuinely because you feel like it. And then I choose you randomly. I know sometimes some of y'all like, well, I've been doing this for a long time. I never won. Listen, it's random. I can't give away to everybody. If I could, I would believe me. That's just how I do things. But let's go into the video. Now, I went to Target, I went to Walmart, I did the best that I could. I didn't get a variety of different brands that I would have liked. For instance, I wanted to get stuff from Milani and Target. Did Target have Milani? I don't remember. But Walmart's Milani was looking real raggedy. It was just raggedy. I was like, wait, why is this place so trash? Drugstore just means that the store offers pharmacy drugs, prescriptions, okay? So Walmart and Target both have a pharmacy. That's where I chose to go. I Perhaps I should have went to CVS, Walgreens, maybe next time. But I wanted to get this video out to y'all ASAP. So let's go through what I got now. Oh. First of all, if you're wondering about these earrings on Amazon, I'm gonna link a video of my Amazon. It's basically an affordable jewelry collection type video. These are part of it. I'll link that video for you. I'll also link the folder that I have on my Amazon storefront where these earrings are, okay? I love them. I love having three ear piercings. Ew, and the hair is all mine. Don't get dumb. It's all me or whatever. This is my silk press. Don't get dumb. <laughs> I know it looks real good and stuff. Yes, it's not a relaxer, baby. It's all your girl. Edges is laid down with the got to be in case you're really feeling it. <laughs> I'm feeling myself. And as I always tell you, when I feel myself, I'm gonna do what? I'm gonna let you know. I'm not gonna hold it from you, okay? The primer that I got is is NYX Cosmetics Hydra Touch Primer Base. So let's go ahead and do that now. Something that I've already always been using forever and a day is the Elf Cosmetics Lock On Lip Primer. I hate that this is no longer to be found. It's a problem for me. And I do understand if it's a problem for you too. I hate it. This thing is so good. I do use the MAC Cosmetics Primer more now because I know you can't find this, but this is a drug auditorium, so I'm gonna stick with this one. Even though you can't find it. Now, it's gonna feel like nothing. And I, of course, always put on a chap, I call everything chapstick, but I of course always put on a, a lip balm, Laneige lip sleeping mask, whatever, before I come and sit down, but then I wipe it off and do that because a lip primer is important. I like to prime all over the face and we'll go through that, okay? So then now the face primer, I'm going to use a hydrating primer because my face feels dry. I love the dewy face look. It's opposite of the weather. So to me, it just looks better. Greasy skin in the hot and the heat don't look good. Dry skin, but it's not dry, right? Like mattified skin looks great in the summertime. Dewy skin looks great in the wintertime. That's the way that I look at it. And that's how I go about choosing the products that I use. This is the first time that I'm using this product. Next Cosmetics Hydra. This looks like an O, it's an A. Hydra Touch. Comment and let me know if you've tried this. Now, I already did my skincare and I put on SPF and I'm putting this on top, but like, Okay, but there's that. Brows are microbladed. I'm doing a video on what I've learned as a microbladed queen now. So look out for that video to learn more. You're gonna see that I'm gonna basically cover these up and do my own brows. I'll explain more in that video because I use full coverage makeup. So 
gonna get covered you know, by like how it looks right now. Okay, so putting this all over because I want the hydration to be all over. Sometimes I put the primer only my T-zone. It depends on what primer I'm using. So watch my video on primers where I talk about that because you want to focus your primer only where you need it. Let's say you're using a mattifying primer, you're not gonna wanna put that all over your face because if your forehead is dry and your T-zone is oily, now you have made your forehead drier than it needs to be, okay? So make sure you watch that video. I did not find a new foundation that I hadn't already tried. Although I just saw a video that told me that Maybelline Superstay has a new version of this Superstay foundation, active something. I didn't see that when I was there or perhaps I just didn't recognize it because it looks a little similar to this bottle. But this is my tried and true favorite, Maybelline Superstay 24 hour foundation. This is the color deep bronze. I like this foundation a lot. I'm doing a lot with my hair. Don't get in my way. Okay, this is the color deep bronze. I like to go on the back of the hair. Hand. I just did three pumps. Now my brush is in our drug, so we're not doing that. I got a brush video, Amazon set. Go ahead and look at that if you want a whole set. This brush is Sephora 70 brush. I finally washed my brushes, so I could use this one again. So annoying. <laughs> now, when it comes to my foundation, I love wearing full coverage. You could certainly go with a natural finish, medium, lightweight, BB cream, any of the above, but I love to wear full coverage foundation. And when I use this type of a brush, which is a flat kabuki, I like to press. We're not wiping, we're pressing because I want there to be a full application of the product. Now, what I love about full coverage foundations is that you don't need a lot in order to get the coverage that you want because it's what? Full coverage. So the level of pigment in the liquid is really high, meaning you don't need much to get the coverage you need. If you were wearing a light or medium coverage foundation, some are buildable. So you can put on a lot to give you an added level of coverage, but with full coverage foundations, maybe no, you don't have to do all of that. You don't need to take too much, okay? Now when it comes to the hairline, I'm not gonna go close to it because we don't want there to be any harsh lines. Let me go over my brows. It's so weird, you see, because I wear full coverage foundation look at that <laughs> yo the brow is just invisible and stuff we back to the basics right now baby we back to the basics i can't even do it <laughs> you look like you you didn't even exist we didn't even know your name who are you i'm so irritated by it yo if you have on earpieces uh praise the lord okay because this is day two of putting on makeup after microblading and baby like this is my first time putting it all over the brow like that yo we just we just took her out chokehold she's gone <laughs> okay i'm laughing too much i'm bringing this real close to the hairline let me be careful i'm not gonna go over the eyelid because we are gonna do an eyeshadow primer and an eyeshadow look so let's just leave that there wiping off the excess in between foundation applications good thing to do so that your foundation brush isn't too caked up with product okay i always keep cut up pieces of my paper towel next to me and a paper towel in front of me because i learned that from mac and i just we used to use kleenex or whatever brand they had and i've i've carried it on through it's a must i'm highly conscientious it's important to me to have organization here in front of me now concealer i did pick up the elf camo i have have the matte one and I use deep chestnut. I picked up the hydrating one. I've never tried this and I know that this has been out for a second, okay? So let's see what this is about. Now tell me, do you use the e.l.f. Camo hydrating or do you use the e.l.f. Camo matte? The matte one has a black cap. These colors, ooh. The hydrating one is darker. This is the matte one. What is that about? Why are the colors different? Okay, but they're both deep chestnut, okay? So here we go with this. Yeah, it's giving me like the color that I have in the Fenty Pro Filter Concealer. So let's see how it looks when I blend all of it out. I hope it don't look crazy. Now I did grab the e.l.f. Cosmetics Total Face Sponges. I wet this one. It expanded so nicely. I actually really like it and it's giving me the feel of my Amazon makeup sponges that I love. It comes in a five pack. I'm like, oh, this is impressive. I used to use the Real Techniques Orange Sponge. Too thick, too dense. This I love. I can get right down to the middle. Okay, so I soaked it, watched my bit 
video on makeup sponges, how to use it correctly. I soaked it and I'm, I got off the excess water and I'm doing this to really make sure that it's all off in the way that I want. Watch the video. Now you see that I'm talking and allowing this to stay on my face. Why? Because this is a hydrating foundation. It's not going to dry fast. I've got time. Watch the video on concealers to ex understand why I'm saying that. So now pinching the pointy part of it and starting on the outer part of my face, which is where I like to blend my foundation because I want the inner part to dry some more to give me more coverage. I'm moving slowly around the edge of it. I don't want to blend this all over my face. I want it to stay where it is, you heard? We're not going to go all the way to the hairline because we don't need to. I'm wiping off on my paper towel. There's a towel under my paper towel, FYI. And I'm taking a clean part to just go over this area because what do we want to avoid? Any harsh lines, okay? And let's go and do this side. It's looking beautiful. It's so strange to use this though because I'm used to the matte one, which dries extremely fast. I have to work a lot faster when I use that one. Wow, that looks good. This color is nice and that looks really good. It looks dewy, unusual, unusual because the other one does not look like that when I blend it. I do like it. Let's blend the other side. Now, you know, we got to do the middle of the face right down here in a T zone. I always do that. Comment, let me know if you still do this. If you're a beginner, have you ever done this or are you terrified to even give it a shot? Let me know. I like to blend the chin first. I want this to dry just a smidge before I blend it. But of course, if you're beginning, don't take too much time because you might find yourself in a tizzy, okay? Now, going under the chin to me is advanced. You do not need to do that unless you want to give it a try, but see how I'm doing it with leftover product. I did not add a bunch of concealer there because I want it to be subtle and not too harsh. And now we're going to the middle of the forehead. Careful to blend right in the middle of where the product is. Make your way to the outside, but I love to take off the excess product by pressing it into my tissue. I call everything a tissue. I know it's a paper towel. That's just how I say things. And then we're going around the harsh lines. We don't want any lines of demarcation, okay? Pinching this pointy part a bit and going right up the middle. Take your time with this. You want it to be perfect, although I have zoomed through this when I've been in a rush. Back over to the forehead, blending any potential harsh lines. All right, so far this is looking real good. Now we need to contour. I have tried this already, the e.l.f. putty primer, putty what? Putty bronzer. This is Sunkissed, alrighty? Because I did not find anything in store that was a bronzer. So Sunkissed using my Sephora 56 brush and going here. Is this dark enough? Yeah. It's not gonna be too dark, but it's enough to show, which is what I need. Now I like to go on the perimeter of the face all the way around, stipple it in. No need to be dragging. This is not a drag and drop on your desktop. Just go ahead and stipple this in. Get it into your hairline. A smidge because it needs to look as natural as possible. This is actually a soft contour, but we do have a contour setting powder, which I hope will give more depth to this contour. I want it to be a little darker. Now, this concealer is very warm, okay? Orange, it's very warm, not in a bad way. I'm just surprised because the deep chestnut matte is not this warm at all. So I'm like, what? My face is looking way warmer than I wanted to today. But I think it'll all come out. I think it'll all come together. There's some looks that are more warm than others, but you just got to know how to finagle it. It'll still look good. You just got to give it a shot. Give it a second. Give it some time. Then there's some looks that be looking more cool than others. Yo, with this microblading, what's so strange is going over this area with the contour, knowing that I have a brow here. The whole thing is like an experience. Like the whole thing is like being on vacation. It's just strange. It's very, very strange. Okay. All right. The oh, wait, I took off. I wiped off the excess on my paper towel, forgetting that I take the excess on the brush and do my nose. Hello. Hello. This is advanced. You don't need to do this if you are a beginner, but if you're feeling froggy, go ahead and do it. I take the excess because if you want to take product and go down the sides of the nose, to me, it will look extremely harsh. So just take what's left over on this brush with another brush shaped like this, preferably flat and a little fluffy because it goes right down the side of the nose so easily. But you could of course take an eyeshadow blending brush and do the same. This is a random Luxie Cosmetics 209 large shader brush. It's the perfect shape for my nose and I only use it for 
the nose. All right, all right, all right. Now it's time to set the concealer. This is the O Cosmetics Matte Setting Powder. Do they still have this? I've had this for some time. I did not find another highlighting setting powder. <laughs> so I have this one. Okay. O Cosmetics Matte Setting Powder. This is the color tan. All right. And it is also giving warm. <laughs> I'm doing that because I'm feeling very warm right now and I'm not necessarily wanting to add more warmth. Warmth meaning the orange, right? I'm like trying to neutralize it a little bit and this is not going to neutralize it, but let's keep on moving forward, okay? I'm going to use this Sigma brush because of the shape of it. <laughs> I washed it so the shape is looking a little wild, but here we go. It's going to do what we need to do anyway. Taking some of the product on the back of this container and my sponge to make sure that there is no creasing right here under my eye especially I do this all the time anyway but this is a hydrating concealer so you really want to make sure and let's do this to make sure that there are no harsh lines because we did do a contour fixing my face still because you don't want to add any more creases start right here hope you can see that I have to look look down okay and get that I didn't take too much product now I gotta look <laughs> I can't even see this is like insane okay so let's take a little more product Close my eye, I have contacts on. I hate when the powder gets in my eye, it's, it's irritating. Side of the nose, don't forget that. Don't let there be a caked up look on the side of your nose, okay? Taking some more product, always tap off the excess and let's do this side. Little by little, get every crevice, don't rush this part. You want it to set. Now, if you have dry under eyes, don't set your under eye, try it that way. Try not setting it and see how you feel as the day goes on based on how your under eye area looks. But what I will say is that it will benefit you to figure out what is the reason of your under eye dryness and you will want to get rid of it, fix it, because otherwise, it could show through in your makeup and you don't want that look. You see what I'm saying? All right, now we've done that. Let me leave a little bit of this product on my paper towel because I'm gonna need it to set under my brows once I do them. So I always leave some just splashed onto the paper towel, honestly. Then I do that to make sure that there's no excess coming off of the product before I put it into my makeup case, okay? I'm gonna link this makeup case for you too. I use it to store the products that I'm currently using and then I change things out as time goes on. All right, now let's set the contour. Not a must, but I love to do it and I really want to do it this time because my contour is looking way too natural for me. I love for my contour to show, okay? I did grab this NYX Cosmetics Can't Stop, Won't Stop Mattifying Powder. This is the color Rich. I was like, yo, we need this. Okay, it is cool. Do you see that? It's not giving orange. So hopefully, but then again, it's not the contour that I need to neutralize, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, putting this on the area where I mattified. I'm not gonna put it down the nose because it'll make the contour way too pronounced. Now, do you see a difference here versus here? It's subtle, we're not taking too much. Grabbing some of the product, starting closer to my face because the first place you put down the product is going to give you the most product. And I do not want that to happen right in the middle of my face. I'm okay with that happening toward my hairline, okay? I love how this looks, really, really beautiful. And now we need to do a face powder. Watch my video on face powders to understand what's going on when it comes to that. This is the drugstore face powder. This is the lip bar. I have used this before in a sponsorship with them on IG. This is Bronze Beauty Set the Tone Finishing Powder. And I'm gonna grab this brush. Y'all love this brush me and complex culture the powder brush is so big and fluffy and i'm taking it an ample amount of it too you know this is going to give us a little bit of coverage but certainly help blend everything together i start at the chin and then i make my way in the middle of my face because i'm not trying to put too much product over the area that i highlighted more importantly under the eye i want that to really be pronounced but i still go over it to make sure that it all comes together okay definitely do above the brow very important and there's no need to go over the contour this is for everywhere else i can't imagine doing my face and not doing this face powder step i just cannot i used to and when i look at those pictures i'm like what in god's green earth is going on here so this is the time to make a routine where i would put on my liquid highlighter which is rare beauty but that's not drugstore. I did grab this 
revolution. I want to say makeup revolution, but it's called revolution. Revolution makeup revolution London. So what is it? Okay, revolution. It's a highlighter reloaded, the color Dare to Divulge. Okay, I have not tried this. I do not use pressed powders anymore. However, when I first began, ooh, this is very, I just took a lot. Wow, the pigment is insane. <laughs> oh, wow, the pigment is insane on that. I don't use pressed highlighters. Now that would be actually really beautiful in my tear duct. Oh my gosh, I don't know how we gonna do this on a face. I use liquid highlighter because it melts into the skin a lot better than a powder highlight. This is intense. Okay, what brush am I gonna use? I don't even have a face highlighter brush. That's how much I don't. What would happen if I were to use my sponge? Can I do that? Let me see. I've never done this. Hold on. Damp sponge, powder highlight. Let me see something. Okay, it, it gave me the outline of the design. That's not good, that's not good. Let me try it back in my hand. I think this might be better than me using a brush. Let's do it. Let's try this for the first time together. Now the issue that I have with powder highlights is that it's like Tisha from Love and Marriage Huntsville. Like who was her makeup artist? You dev one for that. Why is it giving, oh God, it's giving, mm, it's giving, kindergarten confetti. Wow. I'm sure this is gonna be really beautiful in the inner eye tear duct, but this is why I don't like pressed face powder. <laughs> it doesn't blend. And I know that if I took a brush, it would look like this or worse. These are the areas where I normally will put my face powder. My God, I'm wiping this off. <laughs> and now I'm trying to go over what I can. Now, <laughs> I may be able to salvage this with the face spray, which tends to melt powders down to make them look more palatable. Okay, the face spray that I got is the NYX Cosmetics Dewy Finish Long Lasting Setting Spray. And I did use this yesterday, so it is really good, okay? Let me get my fan. Make sure you're not squeezing your face when you spray your face. Rest your face, resting face, and then spray. You don't wanna create any lines and, and all that stuff, okay? Rest your face and spray, shake, shake, shake. And let's spray and hopefully melt this down a little bit because it's looking psychotic. It's looking a little better, hold on. It's looking a little better. Do you see that? <laughs> I mean, this is still a very frosty, the snowman color. It's still a very silver, cool color, right? It's not a gold color. I'm loving how this looks though, I can't lie. It's not a color I want on my nose ever again in my life, but I do feel like once the look is done, it will look great. This I'm going to keep because I'm gonna use on my inner eye. I know it's gonna look bomb in the inner eye. I love a good frosty inner eye. Mm. This is the eyeshadow palette from Juicy Jazz, Milani Ungilded Most Loves Mattes. Man, yo, she did such a good job. She understood the assignment, especially in this corner quadrant. This is the quadrant that sold me. I was like, yes, brown girl friendly colors. This palette is to me fantastic to do a beginner to start look for show. So we're going to use this for the eyes. And then I grabbed this one. This is the all inclusive eye cheek face palette because it has a, a blush, bronzer, eyeshadow, three eyeshadows down the middle and a highlight. So <laughs> we're going to use this one. Now this bronze color obviously is not going to bronze me, but this palette is, is still really good. So I believe that these are two good options for you at the drugstore if you're trying to get the most bang for your buck. All right, so when it comes to blush, I did use this yesterday and it has a bit of shimmer in it. I didn't like it by itself on my face. If I'm gonna put a shimmer blush on, I want it to go on top of a matte blush. It just didn't look good by itself. So I am gonna go back into time. It's not that far ago. I'm gonna go back into time with the Elf Cosmetics blush. This is always spicy. Girl, I love the warmth in this. It's just so gorgeous. Always spicy, honey. The matte blush just does something for the kids. Start off toward the hairline, as you see, and then make your way to the front because what happens? The first place you pat your product is going to give you the most amount of pigment. You don't want that right here. You want there to be a gradient. I'm gonna add a little more blush because I'm just feeling myself right now. You want there to be a little bit of a gradient, you 
you know you start back here it's okay if you have a lot of color happening on the hairline but not more so here okay do that this is a mac brush it's old wow i can't even see 129 the number can't, the number's going just the engraving is left over all right and then i did take this on top yesterday because i was like by itself it's a no but it does give you a little bit frost it's reminding me of the lip bar they have a highlighter that has a color it's a pink it's reminding me of that a little bit it's gonna give a little something to the cheeks you know so you could do this one or the one up here called blush but this is a straight up that's a straight up shimmer so you want to go real easy with that if you were to use it let's just stop there with the berry cheek okay now we need to do eyebrows okay i do have my tried and true favorite eyebrow pencil situation charlotte silvery we already know that's not drugstore i did grab this one from maybelline i've never used it before in my life i hope it comes out good this is the tattoo studio 24 hour brow duo or is this a gel this is black brown what is this? Oh, I used to use gel to do my brows. I used to use dip brow. Who remembers that? Comment, let me know. Dip brow from MAC, yo. That used to be it, baby. And then there was a darker color that I began using on the tip of my brow. I have not done a gel brow in ages. Let's take it back to the old school, baby. Brushing up my brow hairs because I do have brow hairs in the beginning, in any beginning. Who has seen that video on, on IG? In any beginning, comment, let me know. <laughs> This is cute, it has a dual side. So this side has a slanted brow brush. I have one of those from MAC. Wow, this is taking it back real old school. I'm gonna start back here because I wanna see how dark this product is. This is so nostalgic. This feels good to use, wow. This is bringing back memories, memories. Don't live like people do. They'll always remember you. Whether these are good or bad. It's just the memories that you have. Creating some brow strokes in the front, you know, just to make this thing look like a thing. Ooh, see? The first time you put this product down, it's gonna give you a lot of pigment and I shouldn't have done that right in the front, but I'm learning with this product. This is my first time using it. Hello, use your finger to make things look a little bit better. I'm creating some brow strokes, baby. I'm creating a whole new brow. You know what I'm saying? We doing something real different right now. Hi. This is looking real good though. Do you use gel for your brows? Comment and let me know. All right, so this is definitely giving microblading. <laughs> it looks like my microbladed brow. The tone of the color is looking very microbladed. It's not looking like, oh, you put makeup on your brow. So I'm going to darken up the tips because I just need it to be darker. I love my brow to just be more pronounced. On the edge, this is Elf Cosmetics Instant Lift Brow Pencil. It's black, I believe, right? Where's the color? You know, color on here. Elf, you here cutting corners? Like how? <laughs> Okay, so just here on the tip to make it more pronounced is what I like, you know? It's a subtle difference. And when we clean this up, we are gonna get that arch banging. Don't you worry, baby. All right, now under my brows, I normally use the NARS Soft Matte Cream Concealer because it's thick, but we're sticking with drugstore and I couldn't find a cream concealer in the drugstore, so I'm gonna use this e.l.f. Camo Hydrating Satin. Oh, it's satin finish. Yeah, it does, it does give satin. I'm gonna use this. The color is great. It's a liquid. I haven't used a liquid under my brows in a minute. I used to always use a liquid under my brows. So I am familiar with this. It's just been a long time. Back of the hand always warms up the product, gives me more control of the product, taking it on this brush. Similar brush like this is on my Amazon storefront. Link is always in the description. There's a makeup category. So I'm going to carve under my brow. I know that I'm going back to my makeup brow, but if you see my microblading, what I wish I knew video, you'll see that my natural makeup brow and my microblading brow are just going to be different and I'm okay with that. All right, so I blended this out and now I'm setting it with the leftover of the e.l.f. Cosmetics Tan setting powder right up in here and just left over on my eyelid. And this is looking really good. Okay, I did have the e.l.f. Cosmetics cream eyeshadow base. I can't find it. I pulled out this Juvia's Place I Prep Eye Primer. This is drugstore, right? <laughs> and I'm gonna take a little bit of this. When I first, first used it, it squirted out, it had separated and it annoyed me. But you do gotta give it a shake and take just a little. This is the shade one. I chose it and look, I'm rubbing it around. I chose it because I wanna really get the true pigment of the colors that I'm going to use. You don't need to take a lot of this. I'm taking the extra and putting it on this other eye, but definitely enough to give you a light white-ish base. It dries down matte, which is 
nice. And I like to use the finger because you have a lot more control over how you apply it and where you apply it. Yeah, this dries down matte. Look at it, it's barely coming off right now, okay. So work fast with this because it dries down matte, okay. You got me looking real crazy if you take your time. Now, I'm sitting here like, yo, I really could do an eyeshadow look with these three colors in this palette. I will do that another time, but I really wanna use this palette because it just looks so cute and these colors are just fantastic okay now taking let's build this up i'm going to take the color under the sun and see how this is looking right here in the crease stretch the forehead up and go right in here find your crease by poking your brush in between your eyeball and your brow bone okay and getting some product always tapping off the excess look down if you need to once you're comfortable with where your crease is exactly and then we are blending that in oh Always, always tap off the excess. And as we build up this color, it's proving to be really, really nice. And this is an Avita Joseph brush. It's a deluxe crease brush, but you can of course look at the Amazon brush video that I have. I've got several brushes. This does look like the MAC 217 brush. I just, I have an assortment that I use, okay? Tapping off the excess and I wanna build this up some more because this color looks really gorgeous. And fading this into the brow bone like so. You see that? Fading it in that way. And let's do the same on the other side. All right, and now I'm gonna use Sienna Sunset because I wanna bring more orange. I know that this, the color I just used is a brownish orange. This one is really orange. So I wanna use that to give it more depth. Now, I could have gone in with Sienna Sunset right away, but why? I like to build up my colors. If you've been around for a while, you know that that's just my technique. It looks gorgeous that way. And I think that this looks so beautiful. This Sienna Sunset's got some red in it which is looking really, really good. And it really is gonna create a sunset in our crease, which is so nice. I like to bring the color right to the front of the brow. I'm doing this lightly so that I'm not wiping off my brow any further. I wiped off more than I wanted to. <laughs> I just lowered down my light so you can really see this, okay? Now, let's see. I love to add a little bit of burgundy. I'm gonna use this cinnamon spice. It's a reddish brown, always tapping off the excess, starting right here in the outer part of the eye, okay? Close the eye, really concentrate it right in there. And let's do that. This looks really, really good. I wouldn't go right into cocoa bean right now because cocoa bean looks very cool, very dark. And again, I want this to build up in its intensity, not just go right to the finish line. No, no, no. I'm gonna take our time to build this up. Now I know that if you're a beginner, you're like, excuse me, like what? First of all, I don't have that much time. Second of all, I don't even know what I'm doing. So then in this case, take one of these colors. Don't put three colors into your crease. But if you got time and you've been doing this a little bit and you can flick your wrist a little bit, then go ahead and build up your crease color the way that I am right now. Alrighty, now I'm gonna use this flat, fluffy type of brush. Get any brush that looks like this in shape and I'm gonna put a color onto my lid. The lid color should be lighter than everything else. Let's do bust them off. Tapping off the excess and applying it right in here. Now I'm going over everything so that it blends. Look at that. It already looks so gorgeous. So many options of looks that you can do with this palette. Now I'm twisting as I'm going side to side, getting this color right on the lid, not in the crease, okay? So identify where your lid is, which is right where your eyeball is, and go left to right as you are applying it. And look at how this opened up my eye. And now to add more color to this look, I'm gonna take Smell the Roses. It's a pinky mauve type color. I'm tapping off the excess. Let's pat it in. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're seeing a little bit. <laughs> Let's get this to blend, okay? We don't want it to disappear. Taking some more. I want it to be right here. Here. Okay. All right. And then in the outer part of the crease, should I use a different brush? Maybe I'll just use a blending brush. Let me take that MAC brush I told you about. MAC 217. Same ish brush as what I just used. I'm going to do cinnamon spice first. And then I'm going to use cocoa bean right here in the corner. Let's put this down. Or I might not even need to use cocoa bean. I'll do cocoa bean as a liner. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Because this by itself right here looks really, really good. It's blending into everything. Okay. I want a gradient. 
let me stop because I feel like I'm gonna do too much if I do more, but I wanna do more. <laughs> now we all know that I have loved this Revlon So Fierce Vinyl Eyeliner because it is satin, it is beautiful. I love the shine that it gives. Girl, it just looks amazing. This is Drugstore and I've been using this, I love it. And I'm using the back of my tweezers to isolate my waterline to allow me to apply this product easier. That's all, that's all we doing. Look at that, I love it. It looks so good. Oh, and of course we have to bring the colors down to the bottom. So I'm gonna start off with Sienna Sunset. I'm gonna move down the cinnamon spice and maybe a little bit of cocoa bean, we'll see. Okay, so this was the Maybelline Lash Sensational Sky High in the color Black is Black. This looks really good. Now, you know I always put on lashes, but I do put on mascara first. I like how this looked. Are you wearing mascara by itself? I know a lot of you are. Come in and let me know which one you are loving. This is my first, second time using this. I bought this when I was doing the whole haul. And I like how this is looking. You see how the frost is going? Yes, I'm not going to use this on my bottom lashes because it's just not going to give me what I need. So I am going to cheat just once. Just once with my Lawless One and Done. I have to, for the bottom, it just does something to my bottom lashes, okay? Okay. I got two lash options, both from Ardell. We have the Wispies, and then we have the Double Up 614. 614 looks short for me. I like long lashes, so let me do the wispies. I wanna put on two of these. I want my lashes to be dramatic, you know? But I used to wear these back in the day just by itself, back when I was a beginner. So if you're still wearing wispies, come and let me know. These are 113, these are gonna look real natural. Listen, I never do this, but I feel like I'm about to put mascara on my lashes. I'm just gonna need a little bit more, but these are really, really cute. Let's look at how it's going. I used to wear these when I first started out. Oh my God. It just looks like mascara. All right, let's get the glue on them. And the glue that I've been enjoying is IMB by Kiss. Super strong hold eyelash adhesive black. I'll link all the products below, obviously including this one. Oh my God, these lashes look invisible, but this is what I used to do when I was first doing makeup. I cannot see my eyes. I cannot see my lashes the way I would like them. But comment and let me know if you are liking these lashes. They're looking extremely natural. And what do you think about it? I'm gonna leave it just for the sake of the video, but I wanna put mascara on them. But I wanna leave it, cause I've never done mascara on the lashes, so I'm afraid they are gonna look clumpy and weird. So let me just leave them alone, girl. I told you about Lawless One and Done. So, so good under the lash. Oh my goodness, look at this. Now for Lippy, wow, I have some good options here. I have this Shimmer Balm Lip Gloss from Revolution, Makeup Revolution, whatever you call it. This looks really good. Let's see. I also have a lip pencil from NYX. It's giving plum. The color is vintage. We're doing a nude lippy today. I didn't get anything bold from the drugstore, although I should have. I know y'all be liking the nude combos. I'm actually going to do a nude drugstore combo combo video for you. So NYX Vintage Lip Pencil, lip liner, okay? I like to accentuate that point at the top of my lip. And of course, I like to bring this in a little bit because I'm gonna do an ombre, you gonna see that. All right, so for the lip, I'm gonna use this Maybelline 144 Naked Dare lipstick in the middle. It's looking a little satin, yes. Hmm, cute, love a good ombre. Blot, blot, blot to really blend all that in. I like how this is looking. Yo, I used to do my face like this. What do you think about it? Mm, mm, this is not a nude lippy. This is not a nude lippy, but I'm liking it. The berry on the outside. Look at my nails too. Ew, how cute. This is looking so good. I want to put a gloss on top. I want to try this gloss. Revolution Shimmery Starlight, but this looks so good by itself. I don't know. What should I do. Comment and let me know. I'm not going to see it, but I want to see your comment anyway. I want to know what you would do right now. Would you stop right here? Ooh, this looks so good. Okay, I'm going to wait on the gloss. I'm going to wait on the gloss, okay? Okay, so here we have the finished look, baby. And I am loving it. It came out so nice. Obviously, you know, I would love my lashes to be darker, more dense, but I'm leaving it this way 
all for you because I know that this is a drugstore look that you would love to do. If I know you well, you are loving this look. That's if I know you well. If I don't know you well, comment and let me know. But I think I know you well and I think you're gagging over this look. I wanna know how you feel in the comment, girl. And as always, I'm glad you're here, glad you watched my video. If you have not already, now is the time to give me a like, to subscribe, thumbs up the video because you know it's bomb, okay? And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.